as I mentioned, let's bring him in, our great friend, Dr. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center at Akron Children's Hospital. He's been with us on WAKR Mornings for over 25 years, giving us some great insight into the world of sports medicine. Joe, where do you want to go today? Well, you know, Ray, um, and then we always say it, and you're so good about it, and we don't want to be just uh, only dealing with the issue of concussion, but there's just so much talk, and people are asking and unclear about all this um, if, uh, issues related to Tua and how that might relate to our high school kids and our college kids. How often do we see concussions like this? And so I have about five points I want to talk about of what's happened in the last two weeks with the Tua situation. Um, first of all, we talked about it a little bit <clears throat> briefly last week. It looked very suspicious last week, but he was taken back, evaluated, uh, felt not to have a concussion, put back in the same game, and then played four days later in uh, the Thursday night game. And so there was a lot of controversy related to that. And with all the investigation that has gone on, the NFL today, I think, is going to announce an updated protocol. There's going to be changes to the protocol. And from what I'm hearing, the gross motor instability, that's the fancy word that means the stumbling and fall that we all saw in the initial Sunday game. Um, There's not going to be any judgment to that at all. Even if there's extenuating circumstances like back and neck pain, they're still going to say that athlete needs to be out for the game, considered to have a concussion, be in the protocol for concussion, and have a full workup of concussion related to the number one injury. So there are changes in the protocol. A lot of people have been really railing against changes in the protocol, but, geez, what the heck? In medicine, things evolve all the time. Things change very, very quickly. I'd tell you in a 35-year career of medicine, things change very quickly as we learn and research and other things that go on. So changing the protocol isn't bothersome to me. It's a little easier to do it on the fly in the NFL where there's only 32 teams I don't know that this is going to be able to trickle down to college where there's many more teams and high school this year, but there will be changes in the protocol this week in the NFL and ultimately in the next few months in the other levels of football. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the Thursday night issue. And a lot of people have been asking me what the heck happened on Thursday night. And it was absolutely a classic presentation of what we call abnormal neurologic posturing. Um, I I even heard Miles Garrett say it on an interview using neurologic posturing. Um, That's the sign of a much more significant brain injury. For us, that means an immediate trip to the uh, to the emergency room by squad if somebody is having posturing because that is the sign of what could be a much more significant injury to the brain. Um, the abnormal posturing in some situations, though, only lasts seconds or minutes, but it's really a sign that we need to do more investigation. Remember, everybody who's looking at this, the majority of concussions do not show up on a CAT scan. They do not show up on an MRI. So these are clinical diagnoses, and they're not easy at all. And so in the situations, Ray, where they have the abnormal posturing, they may actually do other tests too, like an EEG, which is looking for seizure activity in the brain, or a thing called an angiogram, where they put dye in the blood vessels of the brain to see if there's any damage there. So they do a more extensive workup than just concussion when somebody has this abnormal neurologic posturing like we saw with Tua on Thursday night. So that was point number two. Point number three is, in the last few days, the neurologic consultant was fired. Um, Not the team physician yet, although they're still uh, reviewing this, but it is in the uh, agreement that the NFLPA, the Players Association, or the NFL, either side, can, um, can get rid of the neurologic consultant if they're not happy with their work and the NFLPA fired the neurologic consultant a couple days ago. Part of it may have been that in the investigation there was hostility on the part of the neurologic uh, consultant, whatever that would be. But anyway, he was let go. So there has been 
much, much criticism going on medically and even by a lot of lay people about what's happened. And from my standpoint, because I've been on the sidelines for a long time, I'm here to tell you it's not always easy when you're on the sidelines sorting out any injuries, let alone those very difficult neurologic and brain injuries. So rather than criticize, I'm really empathizing with those those doctors trying to make those decisions. I know it's not easy. You know, Ray, you know that for 35 years I've spent many, many Friday nights, pretty much every Friday night during football seasons on sidelines in the local area here with high schools. And on many Saturdays I've been at high school or college games. In my entire career I've only seen one case of neurologic posturing in an entire career. It was about 20 years ago, and it was on my dreaded play, you know, from knowing me, the kickoff. Mm -hmm. On a kickoff play, I saw uh, a kid right in front of me, right at my feet, get hit and immediately go into posturing. And we immobilized the neck, called for a squad, and sent that kid immediately to the uh, emergency room and ultimately to the ICU. So these are not very common. So the final point is people want to know when would Tua be able to play. And here's the problem with this one, right? There's just not enough evidence by anybody. Nobody has, hey, my last 50 cases or 100 cases or, hey, let's see, 200 cases of this neurologic posturing. Nobody has that many cases, so nobody knows. So I'll be very curious to see in the next few weeks, is it three months? Is it six months? Is it a year out? Is it the rest of his career, uh, or could it be shorter than that? I did hear an interview with Tua where he says, I'm feeling much better and I'm fine, and I want to get myself ready to get back on the field. But the very difficult decision here, because there's not great history to go on without a lot of cases, will be how long will they hold him out of playing, or will he ever play again? Those are the major questions that are hanging over this issue right now. Yeah, and and there's so much speculation and really – Joe, for the first time, and maybe not the exact first time, a lot of anger in this area, right? There's always been concern. There's always been the sympathy and, oh, no. But now it seems like anger from players and other people pertaining to the Tua situation that many people don't feel it was carried out properly. Right, no doubt. And that's what I'm talking about. A lot of people very angry. We know this is a difficult game and a violent game and for people. And and so I, I do empathize with making the decisions. I know there were some things by the way it looked. And from now on, maybe the newer protocols will be if you see that abnormal stumbling and fall, no no more of this, hey, trying to look for other injuries, whatever the extenuating circumstances, that person's out for the game and needs a full workup. I think that's going to be the major thing. The major thing they're going to say today is that uh, that is an automatic uh, diagnosis of concussion and need for further workup. And I think that's what one of the things that's, that's going to come from this. But you're right, there is a lot of anger. It is, as we talked about last week, when you see it yourself and everybody now knows from their TV set to the eye in the sky to everything else, when the behavior is really abnormal like the last two games, the stumbling the first week and the posturing the second week, and a lot of people are really angry about that. And our first job is to be out there to protect the athletes. It's, it's hard on Friday nights. It's hard in, in the professional game, too. And so uh, not always easy, very complex. But those are dealing with some of the four or five issues that I think have to do with this Tua issue. All right. Great stuff this morning, Joe. Thanks for hitting certainly the hot button in the world of sports right now. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Ray. Have a great week. You too. Dr. Joe Congeni, Sports Medicine Center, Akron Children's Hospital, as I mentioned, part of the WAKR team in the morning show for the last 25-plus years.